Today I have something special, a big one. We are going to automate everything, the whole life cycle of an application from the very beginning until the very end. And the very beginning being local development and the very end being running in production. And in between those two, we are going to deal with pull requests. We will be creating preview environments. But let's backtrack for a second. This is what I really, really, really want to do. I want to simplify local development on my laptop or a desktop. And when I'm done with uh, developing my feature, whatever I'm doing locally on my laptop, I want to create a pull request. And creation of a pull request should result in an application being built, being deployed somewhere, being tested, and being available for anybody who wants to review that pull request. That means that I might have as many applications deployed as there are open pull requests. And when a pull request is merged to the main line, it needs to go to production. I can imagine quite a few steps in between, but that's a general gist. Now, whether you go to staging and then production or directly to production, the process should be the same nevertheless. Now, whether you go first to staging and then to production or directly to production should not change the process. There shouldn't be much difference between deploying here or there or here and there. And we are going to use Kubernetes for all of that. There will be a local Kubernetes cluster running on my laptop. There will be a temporary virtual cluster running for every pull request. And there will be a real production cluster. And the applications or the resources in the production cluster will be managed based on GitOps principles. Now, I had to choose some tools to do all that. And before I tell you which tools I chose, I need to let you know that all those tools can be changed, can be swapped. It's more about the principles and how to do something. And you should be able to adapt my gist, my code, to whichever tool you're using. So for local development, I will be using K3D and DevSpace. For pipelines, I will be using GitHub Actions simply because they are most comfortable. They are simply there, but you can adapt to anything else. For preview environments, I will be using B Cluster, which allows me to create a new virtual cluster for every single pull request and to easily destroy that cluster whenever pull request is closed or merged. Finally, for deployments to production and GitOps in general, I will be using Argo CD. Now, as I said before, you can easily swap any of those tools. If you don't like B Cluster, you can use Capsule or you can even create a separate cluster for every pull request, especially if you're using something cheap like Sivo or Linode or DigitalOcean. Dev space for local development can easily be changed for Scaffold, for example, or many other tools. I will not do anything special in GitHub Actions that cannot be translated easily to Jenkins or CircleCI or Travis or Argo Workflows or whatever you're using. Finally, if you prefer Flux instead of Argo CD, you should be able to adapt it. It's not a big deal. Really, they are very similar. And the same thing can be said for whichever other tools I will be using. They're easily swappable. And this is a practical implementation of a set of principles. If you adopt the principles, implementation can easily be changed. So let's get going. Let's do it. But before we actually start doing whatever I'm going to do, let me tell you what I did before I started recording this session. Actually, not much. I added a few secrets to my GitHub account so that I can manage Docker Hub repository and whatever else I need. I created a cluster somewhere, the one that will act as a production cluster, any cluster should do. And they installed Argo CD in that cluster. That's about it. The instructions with the commands that I executed before I started recording and the commands that I will be executing from now on are in a gist. And the link to the gist is in the description of this video. So go and check it out if you want to follow along or you want to reproduce what I'm doing. You know the drill. All the commands of all my videos are in a gist. Let's start from the beginning, and beginning is local development. I already have a repository with the code of my application and a few other files, so I will start developing a new fancy feature of my fancy, fancy, fancy application. It's a complicated one. I mean, it's not really, it's a Hugo application. It's the silliest application ever, but it should be enough for the demo. So what you see here is Visual Studio Code. Again, you can change it for any IDE. It's just that Visual Studio Code is awesome, so I'm using it. And among other things, I have a terminal session opened at the bottom. I will use K3D as my local Kubernetes cluster, mostly because it's lightning fast and very lightweight. Next, I will create a dev namespace. I do not have to do it locally, but I don't like doing anything in the default namespace. So let me create a dev namespace where I will do my deployments of the application that I'm developing, and I will do it continuously. And I will do that by synchronizing the files between my laptop and the application deployed in my local Kubernetes cluster, and I will let dev space do that for me. So let's create that namespace and make sure that we are using the namespace. 
and from there on since I already have DevSpace YAML file created and if you're not familiar with DevSpace you should be because it's awesome the link to the video is above my head and in the description anyways I will skip through the explanation of what DevSpace is and how it works check the video and I will jump straight into creating a development environment that I will use for this specific application few moments later the browser opened automatically because it figured out that I'm working on an application that is exposed to the outside world and I can see my application in action. As I said before it's a silly application, do not judge me for that. This is a simple demo based on maybe semi-complex principles. Next I will do some local development. I will simulate as if I worked for a few hours or a full day and just fast forward into changing a single line of my source code which is a config toml file. Right? What matters is that I will change some text in my application to subscribe now which should be a clear indication that you should subscribe to this channel as well anyways remember that I changed the literal value to subscribe now that will become important in a second the moment I saved the file DevSpace synchronized it to my application running in a local Kubernetes cluster Hugo reloaded itself and if I refresh the browser I should see the change right away and actually the change is there you can see that it says subscribe now slight hint that that's what you should do if you haven't already when I said it the first time anyways I saw my application in action it is automatically synchronized and deployed in my local Kubernetes cluster and I can conclude that my new fancy feature is finished and I'm ready to create a pull request. But before I do that I will destroy the local cluster. I do not need it anymore. You can assume that this is the last thing I will do today. So there is no need for K3D to run anymore especially since it takes a couple of seconds to start it and even less to destroy it. Now before I create a pull request to propagate this new fancy feature all the way until production eventually let's look at the pipeline that will be executed whenever I create or update a pull request. As I said before I'm using GitHub Actions but you should be able to translate it to whatever else you're using for your pipelines and hint if you want something really awesome maybe you should try Argo Workflows. And if you're not familiar with GitHub Actions and you want to try them out and you should try them out then the link to the video is above my head and in the description. And the pipeline is straightforward. I like simple things because maybe my brain cannot uh, comprehend complicated stuff. So what I'm doing there is first check out the code that triggered the pipeline. Set up Docker, log into Docker Hub, and by the way, I'm using Docker Hub, but you could do the same thing in any container registry. Building and pushing an image. I'm using Docker for that because GitHub Actions in this case is not running in a Kubernetes cluster. You should use Kaniko if you're running builds in a Kubernetes cluster, but in case of GitHub Actions, it doesn't really matter. Further on, I'm making sure that kubeconfig is correctly set up so that I can communicate with my Kubernetes cluster. And then comes the real deal. This is now the important part. This is where I'm deploying an application as a result of creating or updating a pull request. And every pull request will have a separate installation. So each of them will be separate from each other and fully available for testing and manual review for as long as the pull request is open. So I'm doing here three important things. First of all, I'm installing the cluster CLI. I should have probably created an image that has it pre-installed, but I was lazy and did not want to save myself a few seconds every time I run the pipeline. Nevertheless, I'm installing the cluster CLI and then I'm creating a virtual cluster that will be dedicated to this pull request. And once the virtual cluster is up and running, I'm modifying my manifest so that they use the newly built container image. And from there on, I'm using customized to apply those manifests to the newly created virtual cluster so I'm not doing anything directly in my production cluster I'm doing it inside of a virtual cluster you can easily change customize for helm or whatever you're using the principle is always the same create a virtual cluster that will be dedicated to that specific pull request and then deploy the application in question, potentially with dependencies or without dependencies, depending on the architecture of your application. And the last thing missing is to run whichever types of tests you have and you want to run. I was too lazy to write real tests for this application, so I'm having an echo message that simulates tests. You would put real tests over here. Now that we saw the pipeline that will be executed whenever a pull request is created or updated, we can just create the pull request itself. So I'm going to check out a new branch, add files, commit files, push files, and then create a pull request using GitHub CLI, which if you're not familiar is also available in a separate video. And if you haven't used GitHub CLI, there are two things I need to tell you. First, you should be using it. Second, watch the video. Now let me open the link to the pull request and see what's going on. There should be a link to GitHub Actions build that is running right now. 
but there isn't i forgot one important thing uh, i forgot to enable github actions so let me go to the actions tab and then click the big green button that says yes i agree to everything that you're asking me to agree to now since github actions were not enabled the last time i pushed something i will make some additional silly change now that github actions are enabled so that i can run the actions themselves and see the result and there we are, I can see the logs of GitHub Actions build, it's doing whatever it needs to be doing, it will take probably like 10 seconds, half a minute, maybe a minute, I'm not sure. Anyways, let's go to the end of the process and see the result. And the result is that the image based on the pull request was built and pushed to container registry, that the virtual cluster was created and that the application using that specific image was deployed to that virtual cluster and that some tests were executing during the process and what's or not. And I can confirm that the virtual cluster was created by executing the cluster list, for example. From here on, somebody would probably review the pull request that somebody could open the application running in that virtual cluster. It, it got its own load balancer. It, it is exposed to a specific IP and whomever knows the IP should be able to access it. And now when I think about it, I see that I missed one thing. I should have probably created a comment in the pull request saying something like, hey, the application was deployed and it is accessible through this IP. Just click this link if you want to see it in action and blah, 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 blah. But I didn't do that and I will not do that because because I'm too lazy, you can figure it out yourself or send me a comment and I will help you out or create an additional mini video how to create comments in pull requests. Now let's say that all the tests passed and people reviewed the pull request and everybody gave thumbs up and this is amazing, this is fantastic, we should merge it to the main line. And we are going to do just that. But before we do that, let's take a look at the pipeline. Let's take a look at the steps, the actions that will be executed whenever we close or merge a pull request because closing merging is more or less the same thing. This one is extremely simple. We're doing only three things. We're checking out the code. We're getting kubeconfig from a secret. And then we are deleting the virtual cluster. We are removing the whole cluster, the virtual cluster, so that any trace of the pull request is gone and the resources are not wasted anymore and so on and so forth. Now, when I think about it, I should have removed the step that checks out the code that is not needed. In this case, all we really need to do is set up kubeconfig and remove the virtual cluster from the real cluster. And then I can go back to the pull request and click the merge button and say, yes, I want to promote it to production. And before I promote it to production, all the traces of that application running will be removed simply because the whole virtual cluster will be gone, will be destroyed, will be no more. Next nine. And as you can see, the moment I merged, a pipeline was executed or a GitHub Actions built. Actually, two of them were executed. One is a result of merging or closing the pull request and the other one as a result of something being pushed to the main line. We are going to explore the latter one in a second and you already saw what's happening when we close a pull request. That's the one that destroys the virtual cluster. Okay, we're almost there. Let's take a look now at what's happening when something is pushed to the main line. The beginning is the same as before. We check out the code, we configure Docker Hub in or any container registry so that we can build images and push them over there. And then we configure kubeconfig. That's more or less the same as what we did when we create a pull request. The difference is how we deploy to production. We're not going to deploy to production in the same way how we deploy to preview environments for a simple reason, because preview environments are temporary. I do not really need to store the information about those environments in Git. I mean, I could, it could be nice nice addition, but it's not so critical. However, for production, I should not execute kubectl this and that, customize this and that, or helm this and that. I should not execute random things and do random stuff. What I'm going to do instead is clone the repository that contains the references to all the applications running in production. And then I'm going to update the manifest of this specific application by essentially changing the image that is used in production. You know, the one that was just built a few moments ago. And then I'm going to push those changes back to the repository that describes production. So I'm not touching production in any form or way. I'm just cloning a repository that defines production, modifying few files, and then pushing changes back to Git. And while I'm telling you this, I just realized that I made a mistake. There was no need to configure a kubeconfig for the production cluster. Actually, there should be no kubeconfig because I'm not interacting with production in any form or way. So you should mentally ignore the fact that I put to the step that configures kubeconfig to communicate with production because that's not what I'm doing. 
As a matter of fact, I'm going to pause this video, I'm going to remove it from the repository itself. And you should imagine that I did not make that mistake while recording this video. That's about it. Clone, modify, push. There was no action performed inside of the production cluster. However, there is Argo CD running in that production cluster and it is monitoring that repository where I pushed files and it will make sure that the desired state, which is the state that I defined, is the same as the actual state. Or to be more precise, that the actual state converges into the desired state that is defining it. And that's about it. The new release of the application should be running in production. And if you're bored, if you don't have Netflix account and you cannot do something more entertaining, then you can go to GitHub Actions and see it running and see it complete. And then you can go to Argo CD UI and see that after a while, the actual state will be converged to the newly defined desired state, the one that we pushed to Git, and we will live happily after with the new release running in production. And if you're really, really paranoid, you can stay in Argo CD UI and go to the deployment and confirm that the new image is whichever the image was built there. That means that it was really synchronized. And you can go to the ingress controller and click that icon that says, hey, open me and open the new release of the application in a browser and see that it's really updated and all that jazz. Or you can skip all that because you trust the system and you know that after you click the merge button, everything will simply work. And if something doesn't work, you will receive an email or a Slack message or whatever with the notification, something terrible happened. And that's the ideal situation in which you trust the system. You spent enough time with the system, it is battle tested and you trust it. And then you don't observe it anymore. You don't wait over there and say, hey, is it done? Is it done? Is it done? You just go on and watch a movie on Netflix or do something uh, interesting. Go and have coffee, for example, have breakfast, have lunch, dinner, do whatever else except watching the screen waiting for things to happen. And that was the full automation of the full life cycle of an application from local development to preview environments to production. Obviously, this is not production ready. There are additional things you should do, like security scanning, linting, additional testing, real testing, and so on and so forth. But the principle is valid. You can use this process, at least in principle, to construct a really production-ready system that will do everything that needs to be done from the beginning to the end.